Hello YouTube, Reddit Math here, and welcome to something a little bit different. Uh, this is a game called Overfall, which is currently in Kickstarter, uh, requesting some funding. As of right now, they've got about six days left on the Kickstarter, uh, and they're like 50000 of their $65,000 goal. Uh, I heard about this game because of a tweet by Red Hook Games, the creators of Darkest Dungeon, which if you're familiar with my channel, you're probably familiar with as well. I uh, went ahead and checked out the Kickstarter page, which is not normally something I'm super interested in, but uh, they had a game demo on it, and although it's a pre-alpha build of everything, it's got some cool features. The art style is really engaging, and I thought it might be something that fans of the channel would also be interested in checking out. Uh, this is going to be more or less like a long-form kind of LP-ish thing for uh, just whatever the demo has to offer. If you'd like something a little bit shorter, there'll be links in the description, both to the Kickstarter page, as well as a 90-second feature overview that the developers of the game have created. And that'll probably give you a, a pretty good idea in, you know, a minute and a half, if that's what you're looking for here. We're gonna go ahead and kind of jump in. I'll just show you quickly. The options menu is just some volume knobs for right now. Uh, other than that, not a lot to do here. It doesn't look like we can save or resume a game in the demo. So we'll just hit new game and pop on in. Now, in the new game screen, we have basically got our two little characters here. Um, there's not a lot to explain to you. I'm cutting it a ton of slack as just being a pre-alpha build. But one thing I do immediately notice is there appears to be a ton of potential for sort of things to come. Uh, like for instance, when I click on my warrior here and his weapon, I can see all these other weapons with little unlock hints about what kind of quest I might have to take on in order to unlock those. And I think that's really quite cool. Uh, it's similar with the skills. I've only got three of them right now, but there are these other skills that I could potentially unlock, you know, with a, a hint like, being left alone in your adventure with an unflappable point of view will teach you a lot of things. I don't know what that's supposed to mean exactly, but I think it's neat that there are these skills that you could sort of uh, unlock later on in the game. Additionally, the, there's sort of a class select here, and right now all we've got is a fighter and a cleric, but as you can see there's a monk, a rogue, a druid, guardian, warlord, wizard, and ranger. And there's no explanation of what any of those classes are. Some of them are a little bit more obvious than others. Rogue, for instance. But what a guardian or a warlord does exactly, I think is kind of an intriguing concept. Um, within the demo, uh, all there is is just kind of a little check mark here to enter the portal. So that's what we're going to do. And we will immediately hit a load screen. But after just a, a moment at that load screen, we should be totally jumping in to the game as a whole. Uh, one of the things I found like immediately really engaging is this sort of cute, grotesque art style that they've got going on. Very reminiscent of Darkest Dungeon uh, for obvious reasons. And I find that like a really cool art style. I'm, I'm totally, totally down with that. Now, here is sort of our overland kind of map screen. Um, we're this ship in the center here. And if I click, I can move around. And one cool kind of thing, everything's moving in kind of slow motion uh, until I move and then it speeds up quite a bit. I think that's a cool way to, to sort of maneuver. And as you can see, I'll kind of poke around for a second here. There's just a bunch of islands everywhere. Uh, probably for the sake of the demo, if I pop into any of these, it's just sadly there's nothing to do here. But on Akaton Island nearby, I'm sure you'll find something to do. And he marks a location on our map. Basically, anybody that we go visit just kind of tells us, hey, you should check out this one island that totally works in the demo. The ships are similar. Like, here's a pirate ship, a goblin ship. There's all these, like, ships roaming around doing things. Oops, I actually bumped into an island. Hasn't anyone directed you to that island where all the awesome stuff is going on? Go check it out. Yeah, yeah, they totally have. Uh, similarly... I can catch up to a ship here like here's an adventure ship they are currently journeying to distant lands and if I slam into them they're going on an exciting mission too bad you can't join maybe next time uh, they all say just things like that for right now like nah you know you should probably go do this other thing at the moment uh, which is totally understandable for the demo 
and if we do head to this island, we are going to find something to do. As you land on the island of Akaton, you meet, are met by a humble farmer and his family. Thank the gods that you've come. My pigs have gone missing. Strange creatures are stealing them. Please help us. This cannot go uninvestigated. I will go and uncover the fate of the farmer's pigs. Uh, yeah, the pigs, they got they got big and red-eyed and scary. Uh, short way off of the farmer's homestead, I am confronted by a pair of giant man-sized pigs. They glare at me with malice in their eyes. I will regret my interference. And all we've got here is to attack, but we're quickly interrupted by a screw you pigs. I really hope that this is not just filler and that this is actually the way that like random things in the game work because I find that to be hilarious and I totally hope that it's the way that the game plays. Um, it's got like the, the animation style, like the idle animations and things like that are again things that I could totally see in Darkest Dungeon. Uh, I know it's not just a ripoff. The game started development last year, uh, has appeared at GDC this spring. Things like that, so, you know, the game's been going on for a while, but there's a lot of things that sort of remind me of it. Uh, and I can fry their bacon, and uh, as soon as we start the fight, it moves into this sort of, uh, like, tactical screen here. Uh, we've got our uh, little grid-based combat, or hex-based combat, I suppose, and uh, there are three sort of distinct phases. So I've played, like, ten minutes of this. Basically, I fought this fight exited out and was like, that's cool, I want to show people that. And so, what I've seen so far is, whenever we get into combat, there is like an initiative bar going on up top here. Uh, our cleric Alberta is the first one of our characters to go first, and she immediately moves into her movement phase. And so, right now, we've got two skills in her movement phase. She can either move, which appears to be a skill that everybody possesses, or use Faithful Pull. Uh, Faithful Pull has a range of four, and it like pulls another friendly character towards you to kind of get them out of combat. Uh, for right now, we're gonna just wanna get in the mix of things. So if we walk over here, we're then going to move into our utility phase, where we've got a number of skills that usually aren't direct attacks, but like remove, Dispel removes buffs or Debuffs, uh, Numbing Light can restore a little bit of HP, Scream can apply fear, things like that, like they're not direct attacks. Uh, for right now, I think I'm just going to go ahead and scream at this guy. Um, and I think it actually, okay, so cooldown is two turns and the target is just adjacent. So if I just double click on it, it'll then cause her to scream, that'll make this little dude fearful, it appears above him. He's going to move five hexes in the opposite direction on his next turn. And then uh, if we finally get into our attack phase, and in it we've got like a little bit more offensive style of things. Uh, we can Holy Nova, deal three damage, deal four damage and apply confusion, three, and apply regeneration to allies. For right now I think retribution is just like a straight up attack makes the most sense. And bam, we hit with our hammer. Uh, similarly, now we're moving on to uh, Weinmar here, our fighter-y guy, and he can both move or heroically leap. There's a cooldown of two, but I've got uh, the ability to use it right now, so I can jump into combat, dealing two damage easily there. And then for his utility phase, we can Rampage, which is going to do a self-buff to him, Fury, Precision, Might. He just gets all around better, basically. And then he's got three different attack moves. Chop, Cleave, and Execute. Basically, Chop applies bleed, Cleave does better things when the target is bleeding, and Execute does better things when uh, target is below 50% HP. Totally makes sense. So we'll lead with Chop, as that seems to be the rhythm of things. That will apply bleed to him, so he's taking a little bit of damage just every turn. Oh no, and we get hit. And the, uh, the attack knocked us way back there. Alright, and he's now fearful, so he had to run away, which means he doesn't really get to do anything the next turn. Awesome. And so, I wonder... Oh, I can't faithfully pull from that far. That is unfortunate. Well, I'll tell you what then. She'll just go ahead and move up. She should be able to get this kill on her own with maybe Holy Nova. 
it does damage to adjacent, so it'll hit both of them. Oh, it doesn't quite get him. That bleed might, though. I wish I could see an exact HP number. Somehow. Like, that would be, I think, really cool. Oh, you can hide the, uh, the health bars. Neat. I didn't know that before. Um, okay, and that goes into that. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. I've done terrible things. Okay. Uh, we can frighten. Range of four. Let's actually try that. Cool. And then all of these are melee. Unfortunately, we are out of position because I am an idiot and clicked randomly on the map while trying to sort out some other menu items. Oh, man. Unfortunately, she got hit for a bunch of other stuff. Bleeding, mortal wounds, dazed, and chilled. But our little mysterious stranger here, thankfully, eliminated uh, that enemy for us. Move around to the other side. Um, can I heal myself? I totally can. Awesome. So it puts a little increased evasion buff on us as well. That is neat. All right. And then we'll just hammer fall again. Cool. He's still not going to be able to get in range. That is disappointing. Um, so I guess we'll just uh, do something like that. And then we'll end up having to pass here. Oh, I, I, wish, I wish the misclick had never happened. My uh, first attempt through here definitely went a lot smoother. But it's okay. Uh, I'm just going to skip with that. I'm going to skip with that. And then I'm going to like wave of light there. Didn't exactly use it to its fullest. If there had been characters behind it, they would have gotten a little bit of healing. Uh, which would have been pretty neat. Then I can leap into combat. Uh, apply fear. Why not? Fear and dazed. Cool. And then I'm actually lined up great to use an execute. Awesome. And that gets the job done. And his little ghosty bone man floats away. The last of the pigs falls to the ground. Nice. Now let's search the bodies. They must have the orb somewhere. Have the what now? Uh, the Rift Stalker searches the bodies and retrieves, retrieves out the Orb of War. This, the Orb of War. Uh, well, what's that for? They promise that all will be revealed soon. Follow me to the council. They'll explain and you deserve a share of the reward. I'm the Rift Stalker, by the way. All right. We can follow them back to the village. Uh, so this is as far as I went. Uh, I played through here and then I went ahead and stopped. This may end right after we talk to these guys or more things may happen, but we're going to find that part out together. Uh, and we get that the Rift Stalker has joined our party. Super cool. So it looks like we're just going to have her. Um, maybe we will get to another fight. I think that would be pretty cool. Uh, in the village, you are met by a group of experienced adventurers. They introduce themselves as the Order of Para. Welcome, heroes. We are the Order of Para. We go on adventures in search of holy artifacts. Ask them what these artifacts are. They shrug. Eh, we'll explain later. You would have acquired or you have acquired the Orb of War, would you be willing to help us further? Sure, we got nothing better to do. All right, and we added a quest. It is well. Your task is to retrieve the Scroll of Decision. It is being sought by the intrepid princess... Uh... Tsioke? Tsioke. Yeah. Uh, the intrepid princess Tsioke. Go and lend your aid. Ask the Order of Para how Tsioke's name is pronounced. Oh, that's amazing. Or go to the Island of the Princess. I gotta ask. The members of the Order look at me quizzically. It rhymes with walk. Uh, we said her name five seconds ago. Didn't you hear? Okay. Uh, Tsioke is the only way that that rhymes with walk, I think. Tsioke. Sure, sure. Okay, and then it spits us back out into the Overland mappy thing with uh, another arrow down here to our next objective. Super cool. Uh, also, you know, some of the uh, random islands we did bounce off one earlier. There are some of them that always have like tavern symbols. Uh, you could stop by the local inn for drinks and gossip. We can look for work here and we just get told that we already have an important task and, can, and to go finish it. But it kind of points me at like maybe a job board or random quests. Plus we get to look at these little cool villagery people and like the little guy with his ladle. Isn't his, isn't his ladle cute? All right, uh, I just wanted to kind of show off, you know, there are, those sort of ends are spread throughout uh, in addition to other islands. All right, and as we land on this fair isle, a young girl greets me with a smile. 
Thank heaven I thought you'd never arrive. Now to get the scroll we must strive. So I'm assuming this is the princess. What must we do to get this scroll? She shakes you to your soul with the tale of a fierce and ravenous troll. She also speaks in rhyme, which is going to get very annoying very quickly. It's guarded by a terrible troll. How to defeat this fearsome brute, the princess assures you. She'll figure it out, but first you should go to its cave and scout. He lives in a cave where he guards his loot. Go to the cave and have a look around. Okay, and as we approach the cave without a sound, from the cave emanates a rumbling growl. And of rotting corpses a stench most foul. Alright, we've got some options here. We can enter the cave and slay the beast. We can do a survival check to search our surroundings for something of use. Or we could use wisdom to see if there's any other way to defeat this brute. Hmm. I'm going to go ahead. Let's, uh, let's search around for maybe something useful. Under a spreading evergreen tree, you discover a cloak of invisibility. I, I really do think it's going to rhyme the entire rest of the game. Uh, just the thing to fight a troll on the loose. But we can't all fit under this sheet. The princess concocts a cunning ploy to get the scroll without being destroyed. Now it's not the time to retreat. Go ahead and enter the cave. Alright, the princess puts on the cloak and vanishes from sight as the troll lumbles, lumbers forward, spoiling for a fight. Alright, my dinner today is very brave. Oh man, I hate this troll already. He randomly uses... Is he... No, no, I'm trying to find any any pattern to that. None. Whiner. Toy. Brave. No, I got nothing. All right, we're going to go ahead and hold off the troll till the princess gets the scroll. So I'm assuming this is a fight we do not have to win. Oh, boy, that stung. Okay. Um, gotcha. Okay, so all we did was just distract him for a second, and she grabbed the scroll. Interesting. So we don't have to fight him at all for making that uh, survival check. All right, we survived the dance of death with this terrible troll while the distracted troll bellowed and thundered. Tsioke stole the scroll right out from under it. And we can escape. I return to the shore where the ship waits for you to continue in search of your fate. Phew. I think we gave it the slip. Okay. And now we can just head back. Interesting. So, uh, totally fights are avoidable. That is quite cool. I like, uh, sort of any game that will give you a multifaceted approach to problem solving. I think that's very cool. Back on the main island, the Order of Para gratefully accepts the scroll of decision from the princess. I fought, a <laughs> I fought a giant troll in search of this scroll. It was hard work tracing it. Don't go misplacing it. Thanks, princess. Ask the Order of Para about our next task. They explained our next job. Only a goblin elder knows the location of the essence of chaos, but he's fallen ill. Go and see what you can learn. And we can pop off to the goblin's house. And we always appear to get a quest marker. Except, like, at the very start of the game, we didn't have one. We had to, like, visit at least one island for them to tell us where to go. But now it looks like they're they're kind of pointing us in the right direction every time. The goblin here greets you. At least you think that's what he's doing. Welcome to my humble abode. It is good to meet you as Vidic. How is you doing? As Vidic. Vidic, how is you doing? I, I don't understand that run-on sentence at all. Are you all right? I have come down, contracted, ran... Oh! Oh! It... It makes sense that it doesn't make any sense. I see, I see. I have come down, contracted, random disease. All of my speech is in random language. Okay, and we can look around for the essence. We could ask him to say something random. We could use psychic to treat him. Maybe because we're a cleric? I wonder if it only ever shows us skills that we like have uh, like a hundred percent chance of succeeding. Like we're only getting this option because we already can do it. It takes some effort but you manage to return the goblin to a semblance of normality. This goblin in big man's debt. This goblin's thoughts clear now. Oh yeah, you sound super brilliant. Are, are you sure that's how you normally speak? Yes, such is noble speech of goblins. Here is essence of chaos, big man. Take it to order of para. Okay, and we can return back to the order. Oh, well, what is going on? 
On your way back to the ship, you encounter an elf, an orc, and a dwarf. They explain that they have unearthed a treasure chest, and they are arguing about who should take the gold inside. You two are out of your minds. I'm the rightful owner of this loot. Period. Okay. Can we, uh... Can we interact with them at all? No? We just continue? Oh, okay. There we go. They come up with a solution. This is going nowhere. Hey, lad. Want to help us here? How could we help? You decide who gets to keep the money. We can't come to an agreement, so we'll have to trust your judgment. That makes no sense. Like, zero sense that you would just let random people decide. We can either agree to help or, uh, you know, why don't you just divide it equally? No, we don't like each other. Okay, well, that explains that. Okay, so we can ask the dwarf what he intends to do with the money. We can ask the elf what she would do with the money. We can ask the orc what he wants the money for. Or tell them we are ready to make a decision. Alright. So the dwarf first, he will invest it in a low-risk, high-return commodity market, the slave trade. The elf would buy new makeup and beauty products, being pretty does come with a price, yeah, yeah. And finally, the orc needs to get his weapons repaired. I broke the haft when I crushed my cousin's skull. So so are these, these broken weapons, or did orc blades always look super, super gnarly like that? Okay, uh, so all we've got now is tell them we are ready to make our decision. They each stare with expectations. Okay, so, you know, we can endorse the slave trade, uh, the killing trade, or the sale of beauty products. Uh, I think I'm going to go with the sale of beauty products. It seems like the thing least likely to come back to haunt me. The elf became grateful. Oh, I gained some elf reputation. Fantastic. A wise choice. I shall not forget your kindness, human. Let's leave and set sail. Okay, uh, so our objective is back here, but you know what? That immediately points us at something, which is... Let's see if I can chase down an orc ship really quick. We do appear to be, like, generally faster than they are. And he got kind of stuck there. So whenever we go to, like, one of the ships that's uh, one of the races, I believe, we get something like this. We encounter a group of proud orcs. Hmm, speak, Wormling. And we've got some options. We can ask for directions to their homeland. We can ask them about themselves. We can pledge our services to them. Or we can say farewell and sail on. So, if I ask them about themselves, the rulers of the world until cast down by the Ever King, the orcs believe themselves to be the oldest and superior race. They fight for honor, glory, and sometimes just for the sake of fighting. Those forsaken heathens go against the word of the ancestors by claiming to be older. We will crush the blasphemy from their bones. All right. If we ask for directions to their homeland, they're not yet willing to trust us with that information. You are a human, and your honor is questionable. Prove you are a friend of the orcs in this world, and then we will help you. And if we pledge ourselves, they just shrug, and they're like, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe another time. So, with that in mind, uh, we are going to set sail, and what I'm looking for now is maybe like an elf ship because we just uh got a little elfy reputation right that's an elf ship so if we pop over to this guy i don't know if plus one is going to be enough to matter but it's certainly better than what we had um she looks just like the chick that we just encountered okay so now if we ask about themselves elves are obsessed with beauty in all its forms they use illusion magic to appear as beautiful humanoid women. Those who cannot keep up appearances are shunned from their society. That's interesting. So they don't actually look like this. Our mortal enemies are the hollows. Their brutish bestial forms are simply repulsive to us. And if we ask them for directions, no, they're still not willing. Okay, so it's going to be like a long-term kind of questy thing, not like a one and you're done. But uh, my assumption would be that we want to gain favor with a race until the point that they'll let us know where their homeland is and then that going to that homeland would be worthwhile somehow uh let's go ahead and follow our quest marker back up to here oh man there's a couple of islands totally on fire over there in the village the order of para accepts your prize we can get a drink first or absolutely uh you've done well would you care to hear about the next task that we have for you 
Let's go ahead and get a drink first. We can pop over to the tavern. Very cool. Ignoring the collectively raised eyebrows of the entire village, you pop into the end and spend several hours engaging in drunken debauchery. Heroes, let's party! Yeah? Okay. Uh, you don't really look like a frat boy, kind of. you like wiping the sweat with a thing. Okay. Um, is there... There's nothing, there's nothing really to do in here? Hmm. Interesting. So all we do is pop back over. Are you finished? I guess we are. We can nod drunkenly. Yeah, yeah. The old man explains our next job. <laughs> Retrieve the mirror of many things. It used to reside on an island not far from here, but we lost contact with it some time ago. Also, the quest name is My Art Will Go On. Get it? Get it. It's a, it's a Celine Dion reference. Head to the island to retrieve the mirror of many things. Indeed, we will. All right. And again, we get our quest marker right away. So, and you can see the other things can fight. Those Vorns just totally wiped out a ship there. Uh, but we don't seem to be able to fight them, which I don't know if that's like a demo thing or like a, they're not just going to constantly attack you kind of thing. But on the northern shore of this island, we are greeted by a terrible sight. Time has frozen in this place. People along the shore have all come to a standstill. All that is, except for the Forsaken Witch. Hmm. More subjects for my masterwork. How kind of you to come. Well, that's terrifying. It's actually like a really cool character design. I like the... I'm gonna say mask, but I think that's actually her face. Um, that's paint, but like I think the rest of it is just her face. What have you done to this, or destroy the witch? Let's go ahead and what have you done to this place? The witch tells you of her artistic statement with a chilling detachment. In my home, the cold fixes the world in ice. Art is immortality. I have made these people art. I have made them immortal. Ugh. We could d diplomacy, we could critique, or we could destroy the witch. Um, you know, I don't want to try to skip the fight with diplomacy. Oh, and man, she's looking rambunctious. So let's, let's try critiquing her art. You argue that the true joy of existence is in the ephemeral, not the eternal. Her art is trite in content and absent of life, life or dynamism. You think you can do so much better? Here, have the mirror. Let us see what you can accomplish. Ha ha, we tricked you. And we freeze her in place. Okay, so uh, apparently we did skip combat on accident. The witch is powerless against the mirror. Her body locks in place. She will never move again. But in unlife, she has become the art which she so venerated. Uh, that That's irony, kids. That's, that's what that looks like. Unfreeze the rest of the shoreline. The limbs of the people unlock, the wind caresses your face once more, the waves lap against the shore. Change, motion, and life return to this small part of the world. What the... And we explain it to them. Though confused by the whole ordeal, the formerly frozen are understandably grateful that you saved them. I could return. Okay. Thank you. Though thinking about it, I wasn't a very good butcher. Maybe this is a sign I should become an artist. Yeah, you think about that, buddy. Uh, we can go ahead then and return with the mirror. So I'm assuming, like, there has to be more interaction with the ships that would be planned, right? Like, fights to get into with them or something? Maybe? I'm not sure. Back in the village, the Order of Para gratefully accepts your hard-won mirror of many things. Excellent work. Would you like to learn about the next artifact? Yes, tell us about the next artifact. They seem pleased. It is well. Your task is to retrieve the Jewel of Tales. It was last seen in the distant island of Balamori. The Eldritch Fate of Balamori. Quest added. Alright. Set sail for the island. And... The island is not very close by. Let's see here. There's quite a bit of sailing to do. Can I... No, there's no zoom or anything. Elf ship, Vorn ship, chasing the elf ship. Fair enough. I wonder who's going to win. Oh, the Vorn got distracted. Those short attention spans, man. Upon making landfall, you are greeted by the chill of supernatural silence. You know not how you know, 
but death and damnation shroud this island. Alright, we'll make for the village. As the town of Balamore nears, a creeping sense of doom chills your flesh to the bone. And your arrival confirms your premonition. The village is a smoldering ruin, a litany of lives cut short. Okay. Mm. Search the wreckage of the once thriving hamlet for survivors. Oh, dude, it's totally the peoples. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> no one in Balamoria has been spared the wrath of whatever malevolence befell the town. But you do encounter two fellow adventurers. They introduce themselves as the Plague Doctor and the Hellion. It is well that your tenuous sanity has endured this nightmarish assault. Inquire as to their knowledge of Balamori's terrible fate. The two adventurers admit that they have, they have contended with the undead before, but they know little of the precise cause of Balamori's calamitous demise. Though we have long sought it, we know not the origin of this tenebrous malevolence. Attempt to procure their assistance. The Plague Doctor and the Hellion regret that you, they cannot join you on this adventure. We have our own demons to extinguish in the darkest dungeon. Good luck on your quest, futile though it may, may be. Is there no word of advice that you could spare for us? From the recesses of their mind, the Plague Doctor and Hellion recover memories of a trail of whispered rumor leading to a long-forgotten temple to a long-banished god. In ancient temple of Stygian design, the diabolical evil within may be responsible for the cadaverous onslaught. Thank them for their advice. The Plague Doctor and Hellion bid you farewell. Remember, even reanimated bones can fall. Even the dead may die again. Continue to the temple. That was awesome! There's like a super cameo appearance from the characters of the Darkest Dungeon. Oh man, I love that. You know what? I tell you what, I think that's going to be an awesome place to wrap up this episode with uh, some totally awesome guest appearances. We'll, we'll consider that a crossover event from uh, our most recent episode of The Darkest Dungeon. I tell you what, I'm, uh, I don't think there's a way to save or anything, so I'm just going to kind of cut the video here and I'm going to probably keep playing. There'll probably be another episode of this. I'm having fun. I'll totally give this game an hour or two and uh, I don't want to tell anybody how to spend their money and I'm probably never going to do that but I'll let you know uh, I enjoy this game I think it's really cool I think I would enjoy playing a game like this and I think people that enjoy the types of games that I enjoy are probably watching this video and might enjoy those games too and if that's the case I would encourage you to head on over to the Kickstarter they haven't made their goal yet they're about six days away so if this looks like the kind of game that you would be interested in playing you can grab the demo from there you can totally be playing this game right now like I'm I'm not getting this from any other source than there is literally a download link at the Kickstarter page. And you can download this demo and play and check out all the cool stuff to do and have fun and play along. If you don't want to play along, then feel free to join me for uh, part two of this episode, which I'll probably be uploading later today. I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to subscribe for more videos on the channel every single day. Leave a like or a comment if you have anything to say about this or any of my other videos. And I will catch you guys next time.